So this will be episode uh, two of the second video in the capital market series. We're going to go over indexes. I just finished up the uh, stock market or episode one uh, video. This is going to be much briefer. I think that video was 25 minutes, unfortunately. But this one will be much briefer. So let's just get right into it. So this one's going to be about indexes. Uh, you know, this is going to be what are indexes, right? So let's just understand that right away. Uh, I've gotten a lot of phone calls. And it, it, I, in, in one sense, it's good that we have these conversations, but it also, in another sense, it indicates to me that we have some shareholders that may not be as uh, experienced. So I just want to make sure that we cover the basics. And again, I'm this disclaimer, this is not for someone who's advanced, um, you know, who, who has an economics degree or a finance degree and has been doing this 30 years. This, this is for those who don't understand the basics. And again, we're not, this is not going to be a graduate level tutorial. I just want to get people caught up to speed on the bare minimum, okay? So indexes. So, you know, that's a, uh, indexes are interesting. People think it's a direct correlation. It's not. It's the aggregate of whatever they choose to put on there, and then they assign some metric or representative number so that it can indicate up or down. And that's the simplest way to put it, right? So uh, that calculation can be based off of a lot of things. So you might have many companies in an index uh, that, you know, like the S&P 500, for example, and that calculates uh, their underlying holdings. It could be revenue weighted. It could be uh, fundamentals uh, weighted. It could be cap, uh, you know, market cap weighted, or it could be a combination uh, of all of the above. Right. And that number that it, it spits out represents a measure in which we can indicate up or down. So, you might hear, oh, the market's up. When you hear people say the market's up. They're most, mostly talking about uh, the Dow in many cases. So this is just it's, it gives you a single reference number to index the market against. And they try to take a relatively balanced sampling across the market of specific companies they, they choose for a specific index. So as an example, the S&P 500 selects from the, the 500 largest companies on both the New York and the NASDAQ. So you, you're looking at um, companies that are, are operating in different sectors or different market segments. So it's a nice sampling of, uh, of what's happening in the marketplace. Uh, the Dow is a little more exclusive, uh, it's th you know, 30 companies. Um, that are the that have the highest amount of trading. Typically, I know that's not going to be 100% accurate for those who are going to sharp shoot me. Uh, but they, the 30 most traded stocks uh, on both the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq. These are now the the Dow or the DJIA, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, was specifically founded for industry. So you're going to see stocks on there that they felt are the most influential in industry. Now, there are other um, averages or, or indicators that Dow has. We're not going to get into those because I don't think they're relevant to what we do. Uh, but you can look those up and, and see what they're... And they determine this, the, the Dow will help determine, hopefully, or indicate the, the trends of the market, especially of these particular companies, because they're, they're leaders in the industry. Uh, and that'll hopefully reflect in stock prices, uh, the movement of stock prices or price per share up or down, overall speaking, okay? There are many indexes all over the world. You have uh, Nikkei, Shanghai, LSE, London Stock Exchange, DAX, all of these, there's many in, uh, uh, indexes. We're not going to go over all of this. The, the S&P 500 Dow are, are funded from this particular group. And these indexes help us to kind of gauge the moving trend of the market. Is that 100% accurate? No, no, they're good indicators. It's one thing in the previous video, I highlighted a few things that I look at in the market. Pork prices was one, uh, beef prices, home sales, uh, the, the inventory carry on real estate's another thing that I, that I take a look at, new home starts. Uh, there are commodities that you can take a, take a look at. You can also look at rail, uh, there, you know, many things in the different manufacturing sector. So these averages, these indexes consolidate a lot of that and they help give you a, a pulse of what's going on. And, they, and I mentioned in the previous video, 
uh, that this is important, the stock market's important, it's separate from the economy. We, I kind of belabored that point because I want to sep you know, really highlight that. But you have to look at the stock market as the single greatest wealth generator since the early 50s. This is how the middle class essentially was created, right? And, and allowed them to move, and many, many people to move up um, through the economic brackets, uh, if you will. So the, the index market is, is powerful. It's important to be aware of. There are other, uh, you know, there's obviously the NASDAQ composite, which I, I think is worth uh, taking a look at. I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole as well. Um, uh, the, there's the aggregate bond index by uh, Barclays, uh, Bloomberg. These are all things that I think are worth taking a look at and help give you a pulse of what's going on. So it, it's just a broad representative of uh, investment holdings in, in a single portfolio, if you will. So that's indexes. Uh, we're going to cut the video short here, try to keep these things between five and 10 minutes. We're going to go into the next video. The next video is going to uh, go into corporate strategy uh, within the stock market. That might be a little longer one because I have a pretty strong opinion on a few of those things. So we'll cut this video short. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.